Good morning, boys and girls. It's good to uh, be here again with you this Sunday. I'm so excited to be able to sing again with you and pray with you and uh, to dive into God's Word again. Uh, we are going to continue in our study uh, looking at um, uh, in the Old Testament uh, with uh, King Solomon and um, something specific that uh, he um, has written to us or, or has written for uh, for our benefit as well, and so I'm excited to uh, to look at this. It's very helpful for us uh, to consider the uh, the truths that we're going to talk about today. But uh, before we do that, let's close our eyes, let's bow our heads, let's quiet our lips, and let's ask the Lord to bless this time and uh, help us to focus upon Him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this new day. Thank you that we can gather um, on this Sunday. Uh, that we can rejoice in what you have done, Lord. You have told us that um, that if we uh, seek uh, wisdom from you, you would give that to us and, and that you would give us that truth. Um, and you have, through your word, uh, the Holy Scriptures, Father, that, that you have presented to us clearly. And then you give us teachers that even make it um, um, uh, even more understandable and, and help us to divide it rightly and to uh, interpret it correctly. And uh, we thank you for that and pray that we are faithful to those tasks. And um, help us now, Lord, as we turn our hearts to you, that we would do that um, uh, with purity. Uh, we would do that without distractions and that we would do that in a way that would honor you and not bring glory to ourselves, but turn it and cast it upon you because you are the one do all glory and honor and praise. Help us now, Lord, uh, to be faithful in doing this, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, well, we are going to sing uh, Jesus Strong and Kind uh, together. Um, we have been singing this uh, with each other, and uh, you guys are going to know this very well uh, when we gather back together. Um, but we're also at the end, I'm going to um, uh, sing uh, another uh, short couple of verses of God is so good. Um, I think it's always important for us to uh, remember those songs and to think about uh, the goodness of God and uh, just to claim that, uh, exclaim that uh, as we sing. And it's especially helpful for our little ones because it's such a, a simple song, uh, but with such, um, such truth. And so uh, that's what we're going to do this morning. We are going to sing uh, those songs. So let's begin with that now. Jesus said that if I thirst, I should come to him. No one else can satisfy. I should come to him. Jesus said that if I'm weak, I should come to him. No one else can be my strength, I should come to him. Why? For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. Jesus said that if I fear. Jesus said that if I fear, I should come to him. No one else can be my shield, I should come to him. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. If I'm lost, 
Jesus said that if I'm lost, he will come to me. And he showed me on that cross, he will come to me. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. For the Lord is good and faithful, he will keep us day and night. We can always run to Jesus, Jesus strong and kind. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Sing, He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He answers prayer. He's so good to me. He died for me. He died for me. He died for me. He's so good to me. Sing it. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. Well, good singing, boys and girls. Um, those that is true. God is so good. He. Um, he has done uh, great things uh, for us, and He is continuing to sustain us. And the Scriptures tell us that if we are His and we are saved, that He will perfect us uh, in that day. He will continue to work in us to perfect those things that He says He will do. And uh, ultimately, He will make us perfect as we gather with Him and, and that eternal kingdom. And uh, we rejoice in that. Those are great promises, and, and he tells us that in his scriptures, in the Bible, which he has given to us, and that is another reason why he is good. Well, as we turn our hearts and minds to the Bible this morning, to the scriptures, um, think about this for a moment. What are some things that you, earn, you learned or are learning now um, that are uh, very important to your life? Now I'm saying things that maybe your mom or dad have said to you, like look both ways before you cross the street, or don't touch the stove, it's hot, or stay in your seat, or make sure to buckle the safety belts, or make sure you brush your teeth at night. <laughs> now these are all very practical things. These are all things that um, protect our physical bodies and and things that are helpful to us. But boys and girls, there's, there's wisdom in uh, these sayings. There's applied knowledge in these sayings. There's a reason why we say them. And young children, they need to hear uh, these instructions because left on our own, you know, left on our own, we're going to just do whatever we want. You know, a boy or a girl may just run out into the street and without giving care that there may be a vehicle coming that could run over them. That could be a very horrible thing. But if you take into account and you think through 
what is what is wisdom taught me? What is my mom? What is my mom and my dad taught me? I should not just run out, but I should look both ways before I walk out into the street. But most most of uh, of kids they they don't know those things in um, in the very beginning. We're not born with the knowledge that if I touch the stove, it's going to burn me. We're not born with the knowledge that um, I need to um, uh, I need to sit at the table rather than getting up and walking around. Uh, Mom and dad have to teach me those things. Well, as young children, uh, as as you discover the world and you begin to understand how it works, uh, there those young children are really prone to be foolish and to make poor decisions. You know, uh, we as adults, we might look and say, oh, we could scoff at a child and say, oh, I can't believe they did that. That's so foolish. But really, uh, really, as, um, um, as we look at a child, we have to understand that they do not know better. They do not know better. You know, there are some things you don't know until you've, you've been taught them or until you've learned the hard way. And so hopefully, by grace and, and by love and care from your parents and teachers and other people in charge, they will teach you these things. Well, so it is with a sinner. So it is with sinners. On our own, we would trust in ourselves and lean on our own understanding. You know, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Proverbs 3, 5. You know, that's, that's an important scripture for us to memorize and know because boys and girls, as a sinner, that's what we try to do. We try to lean on our own understanding. We try to do everything in our own power and in our own mind uh, in what we think is right. We would turn toward evil rather than away from it. Proverbs 3, 7 tells us. We would despise the Lord's discipline. Proverbs 3, 11 tells us. Our lives would, be, would end in destruction. Boys and girls, do you want to say that my life is going to end in destruction? Is that what you want for your life? Obviously not. But in God's great mercy, God has given to us His Word, or the book uh, of Proverbs. God has given to us wisdom and knowledge and understanding, all things that we need for this life and for godliness. And it is found in the Scriptures. God gives us instructions in the Bible about how to live. He tells us these things because He knows best about our life and how it works. Boys and girls, let's find out more right now as we look to the scriptures. When King Solomon became king, God told Solomon he could ask for anything. And boys and girls, we learned last week what that was. What did King Solomon ask for? That's right. He asked for wisdom. And when um, and wisdom is the knowledge and understanding of what is right, what is true, what is fair, and what is honest. Wisdom is the knowledge and understanding of what is right, what is true, what is fair, and what is honest. And Solomon wrote down many wise sayings in the book of Proverbs. God empowered Solomon to lead God's people well, and other kings and queens even traveled far away from where they lived to learn from Solomon. Can you imagine that? Being so wise that kings and queens would travel great distances just to come and learn from you. That's who Solomon was. Well, boys and girls, the Proverbs teach us that there are two ways to live. There are two ways to live. Now, what are those two ways to live? There is a wise way, and then there is a foolish way. 
There is a wise way to live, and then there is a foolish way to live. And these wise sayings are helpful to us. They are helpful because they teach us how to be wise. Boys and girls, would you, uh, would you hope that one day someone says, Wow, he is wise, or wow, she is full of wisdom. Man, I know that I wish and I hope that one day somebody would say that of me because I understand God's Word and I understand how He wants me to live my life. The one that created my life and orders the very purpose of, of why I am to live and, and what is the best way for me to live, I should understand how He wants me to do that, right? Because the Bible says I will be wise if I do that. They teach us how to be wise, the scriptures do. They help us to understand the world. They lead us to what is right, what is honest, and what is fair. Solomon wrote that if you want to become wise, begin by fearing the Lord. Solomon, the wisest man that we know, the scriptures tell us, that ever lived, he says, if you want to be, begin to, to become a wise person, begin by fearing the Lord. Do not ignore His wisdom and instruction. Wisdom is fearing the Lord and obeying His word. Wisdom is fearing the Lord and obeying His word. Now, boys and girls, you'll see up on the screen there was uh, an image um, of King Solomon here. And he tells us that, that wisdom is fearing the Lord and obeying his word. Now, isn't that what King Solomon's father, David, even told him back, um, back in, in, uh, in Kings? And uh, in, when, when he was speaking uh, to, to Solomon before he died, isn't that something that David said? He said, I want you to remember his statutes, remember his commandments, seek the Lord in his truth. That's, that's what he was telling Solomon. He was telling Solomon that these are things that you are to remember. These are things that you are to meditate on. And we know even in the Psalms that, uh, that you are encouraged, that you are instructed to meditate on his words day and night. There is never a, a full consumption of God's Word to where you just say, Oh, I can't have any more. I, I, you know, I've, I'm filled to the brim and, and there's no more that I can take in. I've digested it all. Boys and girls, you are to meditate it on it day and night, ever keeping it before your eyes, um, being mindful of the truth that in the power that is held in these words. His wisdom comes from knowing God and knowing His Word. Wisdom is fearing the Lord and obeying His Word. And the Proverbs tell us to trust in the Lord with all of our heart, and we should not trust in ourselves or our own understanding. Why? Why does it say that? Well, who knows the world who knows how the world works best? Well, naturally, the creator of the world knows how the world works best, and that is God. He created everything. And without God's instruction, we are foolish. Without knowing God and knowing what He desires for us, the Bible says we are foolish. God gives us wisdom. Boys and girls, where does wisdom come from? Where does wisdom come from? Remember our question, our big question? Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from God through His Word. Wisdom comes from God through His Word. King Solomon, the wisest man to have ever lived, even instructs us in that, that God's Word gives us all wisdom. Everyone who is born a foolish sinner... And that is everyone. Everyone is born a foolish sinner. But God sent His Son to earth to save us. He sent His Son to earth 
And the Bible says that Jesus would be the wisdom of God. And he would come and be a perfect example for us to follow. Look with me, if you will, in Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. In your Bibles, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7, it reads, The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for learning wisdom and discipline, for understanding insightful sayings, for receiving prudent instruction in righteousness, justice, and integrity, for teaching shrewdness to the inexperienced, knowledge and discretion to a young man. Let a wise person do what? Let a wise person listen and increase learning and let a discerning person obtain guidance for understanding a proverb or a parable the words of the wise and their riddles boys and girls what does verse 7 say the fear of the lord is the beginning of knowledge fools despise wisdom and discipline Boys and girls, do you struggle with listening to your mom and dad? Do you, do you actually rebel against it? When your mom and dad are speaking to you, do you, eh, do you do this a lot? Maybe you're distracted by a color on your finger or your hand. Maybe you're smelling your clothes. That might have been really loud, sorry. Maybe you're doing things um, to distract you. You're looking outside at the birds or the squirrels. You're being distracted by your brother or your sister. You're doing other things, but you're not listening to your mom or your dad or your teacher. Boys and girls, what does verse 7 of Proverbs 1 tell us? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. Boys and girls, what it says here is that you are a fool if you despise wisdom. In other words, if you do not listen to mom and dad, if you do not listen to your teachers, if you do not listen to Pastor Farrell as he's in the pulpit preaching, it says you despise wisdom and discipline. Wow. This is the purpose of Proverbs. Proverbs are for learning wisdom and discipline, for understanding insightful sayings, for receiving prudent instruction and in righteousness, justice, and integrity. And boys and girls, we as sinners, we want to do things on our own. We want to do things in our own power. Proverbs chapter 3 tells us all the way verses 1 through 12. Tell us that my son, don't forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commands for they will bring you many days a full life and well-being. Never let loyalty and faithfulness leave you. Tie them around your neck. Write them down on the tablet of your heart. Then you will find favor and high regard with God and people. Listen, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him or know him and he will make your paths straight don't be wise in your own eyes fear the lord and turn away from evil this will be healing for your body and strengthening for your bones honor the lord with your possessions and with first produce of your entire harvest then your barns will be completely filled and your vats will overflow with new wine. Do not despise the Lord's instructions, my son. This is repeating what he said in verse 7 of chapter 1. He says, do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son. 
Do not despise wisdom. Do not despise discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves. Look, look back at verse 11. Do not despise the Lord's instruction, my son, and do not loathe his discipline. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, just as a father disciplines the son in whom he delights. You know, all the way into the New Testament in, in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, it reminds us of this very verse that those who are God's, those who are chosen of God, who are His children, He will discipline. But we are to become afraid and scared if we are not disciplined for our sin because maybe we are not His children if we are not being chastened, if we are not being disciplined for our sinful actions, boys and girls. And lastly, look at chapter 4. Look at chapter 4, verse 10. Listen, my son, because there's two ways of life. Listen, my son, accept my words, and you will live many years. I am teaching you the way of wisdom. I am guiding you on straight paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered. When you run, you will not stumble. Hold on to the instruction. Don't let go. Guard it, for it is your life. Keep off the path of the wicked. Don't proceed on the way of evil ones. Avoid it. Don't travel on it. Turn away from it and pass it by, for they can't sleep unless they have done what is evil. They are robbed of sleep unless they make someone stumble. They eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The path of the righteous is like the light of the dawn shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. Boys and girls, boys and girls, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. Boys and girls, I am sure if I were to take a poll amongst many of you and I were to say how many of you love being in the sun, probably all of you would raise your hands and say, I love to be in the sun. I love to go to the beach and just play on, play on the beach and in the waves and have the sun shining down upon me. I love to be in the park running around and having the sun just warm up my, my body. But if I were to say, how many of you like to go into the dark and you like to be in the scary, scary places of the dark? I'm sure that many of you would say, no, I don't like that. It's scary. It's creepy, as Aletheia would say. It's, it's not something that I would like. It's not something that you would want to um, uh, be part of. And boys and girls... Wisdom is walking in the light. 18, verse 18 of chapter 4. The path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining brighter and brighter until midday. But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what makes them stumble. Boys and girls, <clears throat> there is two ways to live a way of wisdom the wise way and then there is a foolish way and the Bible says that God has given us a path of wisdom and we are to follow it he is a great creator he has given us all that we need so that we can understand how the creator wants us to live in this in this life and everyone is born a foolish sinner, but God in His mercy has sent His Son, Jesus, to help us have, to give us that wisdom. He has given us His Son, Jesus Christ, as our perfect, as a sacrifice, as a perfect sacrifice for us, so that we can now be a child of God and have the Holy Spirit in us to show us the path of wisdom. 
A foolish sinner leans on his own understanding, the Proverbs tells us. And, and we follow after what we think is right and what we think is the best thing to do. But a person who is wise seeks the counsel of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is the one that illuminates it for us. The Holy Spirit shines the light on the right path and says, follow this way. And that's where the scriptures come into play. The Bible says that Jesus is the wisdom of God, boys and girls. God made the world and he knows how it works best. He made people and knows the best way for them to live and to have joy. Our sin makes us foolish, but wisdom comes from God. Solomon was a wise leader, but more than 900 years later, boys and girls, God provided someone greater than Solomon. God provided his son, Jesus. Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. He provided us perfect wisdom. Boys and girls, the gospel, the good news of what Jesus has done for sinners, it actually seems foolish to those who are lost and dying. But it is God's power to us who are being saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Listen to this verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. But by His doing, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to, who became to us wisdom from God and righteousness, and sanctification, and redemption. Boys and girls, because of what God has done, those who trust in Jesus belong to Him. Jesus makes us right with God. He makes us wise, and He makes us holy. And He sets us free from the power of sin. He provides us everything. He gives us everything we need. Even though in our ways, in our sinful ways, we look at it and we think, well, I need this and I need that and I need all these things to make sure I can do all these things right and better and well. But God says, I've given it all to you already. The way of wisdom is there for you. Just follow it. Boys and girls, where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from God through His Word. Wisdom comes from God through His Word. What does Proverbs chapter 2, verses 6 through 7 tell us? For the Lord gives wisdom. From His mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity. The Lord gives wisdom. Yahweh gives wisdom to us, boys and girls. God is so good, isn't He? I'm so glad we sang that song with one another this morning. We sang about God's goodness, and that goodness is shown to us in the very words that He's given to us in His Bible. Let's pray and thank God for that goodness. Father, thank you for your truth. Thank you that you have given us all wisdom. Thank you that you provide us a way to follow as the great creator and sustainer of our lives. We love you and pray that we would be found faithful to your calling on our, upon us. Help us, Father, to seek wisdom because you say, that if we seek wisdom, if we fear you and, and, and desire knowledge, you would grant that to us. I pray for these boys and girls, Father, that you will uh, keep them in care. Lord, draw them unto yourselves because they are sinners that desire to lean on their own understanding. Just as moms and dads and other adults do as well. Lord, do not allow us to last and to remain in our own understanding, but instead to seek your wisdom and counsel, that we would live the way of the wise. We pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Well, boys and girls, I, I pray that you have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and uh, I look forward to being with you again next time. Until then, I love you, and I'm praying for you, and um, uh, have a great week.